Modulation. Modulation. Lovely. Wow, we got some cool guitar tones going right now. Right? We really do. Um, courtesy of a bunch of pedals, but also courtesy of this little dream setup we have over yeah. in the back here. Yeah, you guys have got some great amps. We're playing through a, a JMP, 70s JMP yeah. on the low input, so it's yeah. set pretty clean. clean. And that old AC30, which is yeah. magic. It's yeah. 65? Yeah. And we got them set up with all the TC pedals in stereo, right? Yeah. Because we'll be talking about modulation today. Yeah, so uh, we thought it would be fun to do in stereo. Yeah. And if you, if you ever hook up a rig like this, it's like it, it becomes instantly addictive. You're like, oh my god, I can never yeah, play in mono. Never again. go back again. <laughs> it just sounds. It really sounds good. You can play anything. It's just like you know, <laughs> sit around and strum chords all day because it sounds so damn good. But anyway. Yeah. So we have a yeah. bunch of pedals, but the main three ones we want to talk about are these three guys in the middle here: the right. uh, vibrato, the chorus, and the flanger. Right. Shaker vibrato, Corona chorus, and vortex flanger. And we figured we'll give a little crash course on the differences between those three effects because they're kind of in the same family yeah. of effects. And this, you know, obviously, not surprisingly, we'll be showing this on CC pedals, but it actually kind of applies to all sorts of vibrato, flanging, and chorus pedals. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because they're all built using the same kind of, you know, circuitry and uh, technology. And you've already taught me a few things that I didn't know today about um, things like through zero flanging, yep. and and you know I've learned a few things sitting here. So maybe you can uh, you know uh, recite some of those things again for the camera. And I, you yep. know there's some really really cool info here. If you've ever wondered like when should you use a chorus or when should you use a flange or what what the difference is between the two, because sometimes they, they can kind of cross over and sound similar, right? Yeah. yeah. And also the difference between chorus and vibrato is an interesting. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's because it's they're not too far off. There's just one thing really. There's really different. just one thing, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so in essence, you could say that we're kind of cheating by making three pedals. To be honest, we could actually just have made one that could do all three. Don't tell people that. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing is that if you follow this today and you do have one of these pedals, right, and you have the editor, mm. you can actually turn your one TC modulation pedal into any of the three ones, and we'll actually show you how to do that today. So. All right, you're going to tell them. Yeah, I guess I'll spill, you, the yeah, yeah. spill the beans. Yeah, you're going to spill the beans. Okay, that's good stuff, though. Um, um, but the first thing we actually did before the camera started rolling, or maybe it did roll in the background, but you yeah. actually dialed in some tones that you liked for the three individual effects, just so we can kind of go through them quickly, and people can hear, like, at least some of the sounds you can yeah. get and the different sounds you can get from the three different effects. And sort of the basic, like, this is vibrato, this is chorus, yeah. and this is flange. That was the goal, right? Exactly. Some of the, the uh, like, you know, what you can think of as the, the kind of the uh, at the core, you know, yeah. sort of tones. Yeah. So should we start with the vibrato? Because it's on it. now. Yep. You guys already heard it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So vibrato is actually giving you pitch mod. Yeah. It's actually, you know, going yeah. up and down in pitch. Yeah, right? so it's the same as using, you know, the vibrato. Vibrato, vibrato arm, or doing, you know, finger vibrato. Yeah, yeah. Only in a little bit more of a mechanical kind of way. Yeah, so just playing one note. It's actually diving up and down, yeah. and and that's vibrato. Um, and if you increase the depth, what's going to happen is, of course, you're going to get more pitch modulation. Yeah. So we have a sort of a medium fast rate going right yeah. now, not really too fast, and uh, and, a, and a fairly low depth because otherwise it starts to get pretty seasick. Yeah. Right. So maybe we can pull up the depth parameter and, and hear how and, it sounds once it goes crazy. Yeah, because it's probably at four or five percent yeah. right now, right? Oh, who like? Oh, you can yeah. stop playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I use vibrato a lot for the kind of beatly descending, you know, like arpeggiated. And I might even use more depth than this, so maybe we can. Yeah, we can, we can crank show it up a bit. Sound like. Some movement and 
Uh, yeah, so so if we really were to increase the depth, what would it sound like? Let's see, we can do this much on it. We can do more than that if I just add it. I'll, I'll open this up just a sec. Here we go. So now I'm going to increase the depth by a lot. Okay, so right now it's at... Our speed slowed down too, right? Can yeah. I reset? Oh, yeah. no. we'll, we'll do this. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Start to that Ethel Merman. This is this like. is maximum, and now it's. Very usable. Yeah, so usable. <laughs> So usable. So that's with the depth up there, eighty yeah. percent or something. So yeah. generally, I find it works kind of somewhere down around below twenty percent or yeah. something. You know, that's fourteen percent. And it's nice. It's a, it's it's an alternative to a to a chorus sound. Now, which brings us to our point: the the difference between vibrato and chorus is essentially this sound is a hundred percent wet. There's no dry sound mixed in. If we were to mix dry sound into this, then we would have a chorus. Yeah. And that's really the only difference between vibrato and chorus, yeah. right? Is is vibrato has 100% wet, you're just hearing the pitch mod thing, and chorus is uh, with some of the dry signal mixed yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. So we can actually do that. We can turn this into a yeah. chorus, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. Now we've got 50% dry signal, yeah. yeah. Go back to 100%. And the main thing you're going to notice is that you notice the the, the mod more. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. You're, you're, because you, it's something it plays up against something else. Yeah. 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 When it's chorus. Yeah. When it's chorus. Yeah. Yeah. I I hear I notice the mod more actually. Yeah. With when vibrato. it's vibrato. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just yeah, hearing you're the just pitch hearing stuff that, yeah. go on. Whereas when the other one's in there, you got some of the dry signal mixed in. It yeah. kind of defines the sound a bit more. Yeah. And you know. So okay, that's vibrato. Yeah. One thing yeah. we might as well also mention now that we're you know we're on the first one of these three pedals because it also applies to all of them, and that is the fact that you mentioned that the depth, you know, sounds good around. 14% for this. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that the depth is actually dependent on all modulation pedals, is mm. dependent on the speed. Mm -hmm. So the slower the speed, the more you can actually yeah, sure. crank up the depth without it getting, you know, out of tune. Definitely. So if we, if we took the, exactly the settings we have now yeah. and we increase the speed, suddenly what sounded like it's, you know, within that range of sounding good and in tune, yeah. suddenly it'll sound out of tune. So if you try yeah. playing now. So, yeah. Right, it gets kind of crazy. Yeah. So, but uh, so let's go with that fast mod for a second, mm. and now let's bring the depth down to like yeah. five percent or something. And... Now you get more like yeah. akin to a rotary speaker yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. It's not so crazy. And yeah. alternatively, if you back the speed down more, you're going to want to increase the depth, yeah. probably, right? Yeah. get away with more yeah, yeah. And it's also dependent on the part because what I noticed with chorusing and vibrato is that depending on what you're playing kind of the slower you play and the more that you let stuff ring out the more apparent that pitch mod is and it yeah. can sound kind of weird like when I'm p picking and arpeggiating the whole time it sounds cool but if I stop <laughs> you know, then yeah. you really start to yeah. hear that defined yeah. mod, and so yeah, it's and so it's really dependent on the part you're playing, I think, yeah. uh, as well. So, for all of these sounds, we create a tone prints. So this one yeah. is called Pete's Vibrato, and yeah. you can actually download. It's not on uh, on Pete's artist page; it's on under the TC page, because then you can actually download it and modify it and try some of the stuff that uh, that we're doing.
Just a starting point yeah. for we're, what, we're kind of making them a sort of generic starting point yeah. tone prints. Yeah, right? yeah, they do sound great because you're helping me dial them in, and you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's why you're yeah, that's metal why. Jesus. Okay, so we're on to the chorus now. Yeah, my basic kind of chorus. Yeah. Sound. So, um, what would I play with this? Um, <laughs> That song before, but it's really good. I know yeah. you were telling me that. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. Or maybe uh, we could turn off the compressor and do. Um, uh, let's see here. Second yeah. time through the chords, but yeah, Super cool. something cool like that. Alex Lifeson. So, chorus. Um, what do we got? We got right now, kind of like a uh, slow rate, sort of medium depth. Thing. Yeah. Is that, is that? I'm just gonna kick this thing in. Here we go. Yeah. So, kind of a slow, um, slow speed. Yeah, slow speed. With with a medium kind of depth. Yeah. A little bit of high cut to kind of just take away the sharp edges. Yeah. Uh, of the modulation. Yeah. Um, and um, a delay time, and the delay time really, I think, makes a big difference on right on how a chorus sounds. So if you you know if you go to a store and you try say ten different chorus pedals, yeah, they'll all have a speed control, they'll all have a depth control, yeah, and they pretty much do the same thing. It changes, you know, how fast is the chorus, how deep does it go, and that's pretty much the same for all of them. Yeah. Um, the high cut will obviously be different. A lot of chorus pedals don't have that, so that that is basically set inside the pedal. So you know, yeah. if you like one more than the other because it's more warm, yeah. chances are there's some kind of cut in there, kind of changing the overall tone. Right. Yeah. But the other thing is the delay time. Yeah. Because it, the longer you make the delay time, the more warm and yeah. liquidy. Kind of. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's more diffuse to me. Yeah. Less sort of defined. Yeah. It sounds more more. Uh, it's a little looser. Yeah. You know, uh, it's always longer. tough to kind of describe how stuff sounds, but exactly, it sounds more, also a little bit more old school and vintage. Yeah, from, yeah. yeah. But luckily, we can just show people. Yeah. Right now. So, so right, right now we have it set fairly high. Yeah. To get that kind of old school loose sound, and then if we back it down, you get more of a pristine kind of hi-fi, shimmery kind of chorus sound. So we can try that. Okay. Um. <laughs> So that's quite up. that's quite low on the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is yeah. seven milliseconds. Yeah. So now you get more of that pristine sound, and I can. Go. And then okay. if we compare that to a longer delay time, and maybe add a little bit more high cut. Okay. <laughs> It's a little more diffuse and yeah, stuff, and yeah. just sounds a little, little warmer, a little less pristine, or yeah. something, a little, you know, a little more watery, yeah. like you said. Yeah. So we talked about before that you know, a shake and a chorus are extremely similar. Mm -hmm. It's basically just whether you have the dry signal in there or not. The one thing we should mention is the shaker doesn't have the stereo output. No, it doesn't. So it's, it's a mono. A, it's a mono pedal. Mono pedal yeah. and the Corona will give you the stereo yeah. out. So that's. And yeah. another thing it will do, and that's the secret part that really will prevent us from selling both a chorus and a flat just to somebody. But that mm -hmm. is inside the editor mm. on the Corona chorus, you actually have the option of killing the dry signal. Okay. So yeah. if you if you play something now, you can turn it into a vibrato. You right? can turn it into a vibrato. I'll do my arpeggiation yeah. again, yeah. basically. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm hearing the. Yeah. yeah, right. And you can hear how warm we've got it set too. Yeah, actually, because yeah. now that we've got that high end yeah, back you, down. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you can you can bring that back up again if you want more of that for the. Uh, for the for the uh, vibrato sound. Yeah. 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 Toggling it. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah. So th that is essentially turning a chorus into a vibrato. Right. Okay. So. Oh, so let's do one more thing with the chorus. Yeah. The two main sort of chorus sounds that I use would be this kind of thing, which is kind of a medium depth and a slow rate. Yeah. And then once again, if we were to turn up the rate, we'd have to probably lower the depth. Or yeah. Otherwise, it's going to start to sound crazy. Yeah. But the other thing I use it for is kind of a Leslie sort of thing. Yeah. So if we if we were to uh, to kind of simulate that, turn the rate up to maybe four hertz yeah. or something like that. I'll do that, and I'll keep the depth to begin with, just so people can hear what happens once you do that without changing the depth. Okay, and then we'll turn it to something yeah. akin to a Leslie or yeah. something, right? You know. Too much modulation. Yep. So we'll back it. I might even go a little more than yeah. that, you know, get it a little No, you know, it's going to give you kind of a Leslie yeah. Leslie-ish thing. Yeah. And you can experiment with the different waveforms like triangle, sine yeah. and all the different yeah. sine waveforms that you guys yeah. offer uh, in order to get the exact, you know, yeah. uh, uh, sort of uh, rippling effect yeah, that, that you, you want. want. Yeah. yeah, but pretty cool. Nice. And there's actually one last thing that we could show really quickly because now we've kind of gotten through the regular chorus. We actually have one more mode. Oh. So typically, most chorus pedals have one part dry, one part wet that you modulate, and that gives you the chorus sound. Right. Um, but in the 80s, somebody came up with a circuit that basically had one dry and three wet signals. Ditronics. Ditronics or Songbird. I think it. At, Dynamite piano. Dynamite piano. Yeah, three different names for the same product. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's we didn't want to do a copy of that sound. It's more like our own version of that. Okay. But it actually does have three choruses running at the same time. And do they pan out at all? So that they're in. The, if you're running a stereo rig, it's, they do uh, pan. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So so you kind of got a v extremely complex yeah. chorusing. And the, the I think the best way to to kind of explain the difference between the two types of chorus is that if you imagined a you know two singers yeah. singing at the same time. If one of them is slightly out of pitch with yeah. the other one, you'll notice it quite fast. Whereas if you have four singers singing at the same time, right. if they're all slightly out of pitch, it kind of blends into almost a choir type sound, yeah. which kind of masks that kind of very obvious warbling thing. Just starts sounding great. Yeah. It's, yeah, it all So know, blends. we can hear the difference if I load this one. So here's the tri-chorus. <laughs> And I blend in a little bit of echo and play something. I don't know what. We'll see what comes out. It's extremely beautiful chorus, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Tri chorus. Very is great. wide and stereo. Stereo. I can't say that. Stereo. 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 I'm the one on four hours of sleep. <laughs> but I'm the one who doesn't have English as my native language. Ah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically with this one you have access to one speed control and then yeah. you have access to three of each parameter. So you have three depth, three high, well one high cut, but three uh, delay times as well. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, it's a really intense. I mean, I love stuff like this for doing the patty, like, I don't know if I can pull this off right now, but let me see here. Is this the mix control? Yeah. No, that's the, that's the tone. The mix is the one down there. 
Okay, that's the mix. Yeah. So I got a lot of delay going here, and maybe I can just. Nice for swells yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Really Having wide that kind of that kind of eighties Lukather Landau. Yeah. So nice. that was a little uh, chorus crash course. Should we move on to the flanger? I think so. Let's do it. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. the quintessential jet flange song. I actually think that flanging in general, getting a good flanging sound, was probably one of the things I, when I started, you know, playing guitar and kind of dabbling around with effects, that it's one of the toughest effects to kind of figure out how to how to dial in. Yeah, it's, because if you want it to be dramatic, you, the settings to make it dramatic aren't what you might think. No, like increasing the depth a lot. Yeah, it doesn't actually do what you'd expect it to do. So yeah. if we load the jet flange sound, we can use that as a starting point. On a flanger, there's a couple of extra parameters that you typically see compared to a um, compared to a chorus and a vibrato pedal. Mm -hmm. um, you'll typically have a speed and a yeah. depth, which is the same as you'd have on your chorus and your vibrato. Yeah, but then you typically also have a feedback parameter, mm -hmm. and you'll have a delay time, sometimes also called manual. Manual, yeah. yeah. But did, it's the same. Why they call it that, manual? I don't know. What did that? <laughs> I don't know. Manual. <laughs> Maybe people think that it makes more sense that way. I, I don't know. But it's yeah. the same, regardless of what you see, yeah. manual or delay time, it's the same parameter that it controls. OK, and it's delay time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to get this kind of jet flanging sound, yeah. you know, typically you'd think that that's a pretty extreme sound. Mm. And you think that the more you crank stuff, mm. the more extreme it's going to get. But it's actually the yeah. opposite of that. Yeah, because the short delay time is what creates that almost through zero sort of yeah. uh, that real crazy jet yeah. sound, right? Because it's the very short delay time that uh, that where the signal's rubbing against the, the wet against the dry yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah, that yeah. gives you that sound. And that combined with the fact that you have to set the speed fairly low because mm -hmm. you want it to move. And also, and that's maybe even more weird because typically you'd think of depth like what we tried on these these two pedals, that if we set the depth high, yeah. we get more of a crazy extreme yeah. sound, sometimes out of tune. Yeah. But to get the jet flanging sound, you actually want a very short depth because you want it to move within a very short pitch change. And right. that's what gives you that kind of slow kind of moving thing that's, that's right if really the depth cool. gets it goes super high or whatever yeah. and you don't hear it yeah right? so just... I can try to if we try to play the same thing yeah It's when you set it to a to a, to a low rate or uh, a low depth that you actually get that kind of sweeping sweeping sound. Yeah, going sound. back and yeah. forth between kind of uh, yeah. Okay, that's mm. cool. So, um, and what have you got the delay time set to right now? It's a uh, five point six milliseconds. So if we shorten it, it's even going to get more jet ish. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's an interesting little trick here, um, and that is, if you want to be very specific about how high this kind of jet sound goes, one way to do that is actually just to listen to the flanger uh, through some noise, so turn like up, what you so turn, turn up. up if you turn up the gain, um, now you can hopefully hear in the background that you have the flanger kind of affecting the noise that's coming from the Mojo Mojo. Right. And then you can actually sweep the uh, delay time parameter. And listen to how how it goes. So if I set it as low as it can possibly go, it'll go really high. Yep. So now it's almost through zero. Yeah. And then if I back it way down. So 
so less that, dramatic. Yeah. yeah. So that way you can actually kind of you can kind of find the spot of how high you want your flanging to go. Yeah. So it's really a combination of what I think of of, of the depth of the flange is kind of a combination of delay time mixed with depth. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, yeah, where you set that delay yeah. time. Is and that's why it's that that's why it can get a little tricky to yeah. kind of dial in that sound. But yeah. we've created the moderate jet flange. Yeah. Yeah, we'll call print it that you moderate, can, moderate jet flange, right? That you can that you can download and use as a starting point. And again, if you want if you want to have a more dramatic effect, you can increase uh, decrease the delay time. Yeah. That will make it more dramatic. Um, you can also increase the feedback. Um, right. Which is the last parameter that you typically won't find on a on a chorus or a vibrato. Okay. So shall I play the same thing? And yeah. You can, so you can I'll try and increase it, yeah. the feedback. Yeah. That you're, we're actually using negative feedback yeah. on this, so when we say it might have been a little confusing oh, yeah, for yeah, people yeah. watching, right? Yeah. But it's a different sound with the negative feedback or the positive feedback, yeah. and how much that you're, you know, as you get closer to no feedback yeah. at all, it gets to be more moderate of yeah. sound. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And to get the jet flange sound, I think that the negative feedback has that kind of hollowed out, kind of weird swoosh that that you'd expect, or you you know you you yeah. think of with that sound. Yeah. Um, positive feedback will give you a little bit more of a warm, yeah. kind of throaty chorus, uh, sorry, flanger sound. Right, right. Um, so, would you say that, let me just ask you really quick, would you say that there's something akin with flanging though, then to actually phasing? Because it's actually kind of, it, what's, what you're getting is almost an out of phase sound, yeah, right? Yeah, it you're is. Getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's a completely different way. Yeah. of creating that sound, yeah. um, but the result is actually sort of similar because there is a lot of phasing going on, specifically when you start adding a lot of feedback because then you have multiple signals mm. kind of sweeping around you know, the frequency spectrum yeah. and getting you know, summed together into one signal. And that'll create that kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely some similarities, and I know that you know, some people even have a hard time listening and figuring out whether something is phasing or flanging sometimes. Right, right. right. Um, which brings us to the next point, and that is that a lot of a lot of sounds that people traditionally have thought of as chorus sounds are actually done using flanger. flangers. Right. And that's because a flanger, in essence, is a chorus with some feedback added, and maybe typically a slightly lower delay time. Right, right. But again, it's the same sort of circuit. Yeah. Um, so we actually dialed in another tone print that kind of gives you a, um, a a chorus sound. Kind of a chorus sound. Yeah. Right? A little bit of like that Andy Summers thing and stuff. Because not, not a lot of people know, well, maybe maybe a fair amount of people know, but uh, there's definitely folks that assume that Andy always, I think, used a, uh, a chorus pedal and maybe also Alex Lifeson, but actually um, Electric Mistress Flanger, right, was a big part of the yeah, tone, I believe. Yeah, exactly. One of the first ones that was commonly available in the 70s. Um, so it's actually flanging. So if we do this real quickly, let me see here. So we, we did this sort of stuff here. Go. So if you try playing now, I think we've got something that's sort of similar to the... Yeah. Oh, can we turn off the distortion? Oh, yeah. And turn on the compressor, yeah. maybe. Chorusy. It's very chorusy. Yeah. I mean, we're crossing definitely over into chorus yeah. territory here, um, for sure. Right? So. And again, you know, with the risk of selling fewer pedals, but maybe helping you guys out, if you have a flanger, you can actually really quickly get both, as you saw before, 
a, like a classic flanging, jet flanging kind of sound. Yeah. You can get a chorus sound. You can even get it more chorus if you turn the feedback all the way off and increase the delay time just a little bit. Now you're basically we actually have the, We have the same, more or less the same setting that we dialed in as the great chorus sound on the Corona. Okay. <laughs> Again, if we then go and kill the dry signal and mm. we turn the speed up to around four hertz, yeah, maybe this backing down, maybe a little bit, we should actually get a sound that's fairly close to the one you dialed in on the oh, uh, for the vibrato. vibrato. And we had a little bit the, of feedback to you that. Might want to bring a high end up though. Oh right? yeah, and the, the delay uh, time will turn that down. Uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, and now we'll. <laughs> So we've just turned the vortex into a vibrato. Yeah. So one pedal, three really, different effects. Really versatile, right? Yeah. I mean, incredibly versatile. Yeah. So yeah, that vortex flanger, there's lots hiding in there. Yeah. If you go at it with the editor. Yeah. So that was a little, uh, a little lesson in modulation pedals, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Hope you guys learned something. <laughs> I learned a lot. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did. Your, your, uh, your, your knowledge is extensive. Thanks. <laughs>